think I want this. The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by some underwear brand that holds your junk or some toilet paper stuff. I don't even know what's going on anymore. CBD joints? <sighs> so this show is covered by a Creative Commons license. Um, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved. And I'm still a little dusty, but we're still we're still kicking off the cobwebs. <laughs> and we're here with um, yeah, we're here with uh, David Lukehart. How you been, man? So good, so good. Living the dream. Yep. How's that new Tony Hawk remake been treating you? It's been a while. <laughs> Fucking haven't even haven't even downloaded it or bought it, man. I'm you s- haven't. I have like nope. Shame. Nope. No time for uh, skedaddling on the PS4. I know you do what the stream or uh fuck ps you're on pc right yeah i'm on pc uh, apparently we're gonna i'm gonna be on xbox soon um that's the whole thing um oh. let's hope let's hope that, that 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 an xbox shows up at some store somewhere i'm hopeful but skeptical uh so yeah my yeah. My, my parents hit me up and they were um and i was talking to them for a little bit and i because uh, microsoft is doing a big cyber monday cyber who knows deal right now online i was like mm-hmm. oh okay i'll get it i'll pick up an xbox controller um i had already bought an xbox duke controller which i fucking love <laughs> but it's but it's wired yeah you, okay so you remember the old xbox controllers the big dinner plate thing yeah like like a hot like a saucer yeah <laughs> a frisbee it's been my favorite controller ever uh, and they re-released it a couple of years ago, and I was like, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And then I started realizing that if I don't get around to it now, I'm probably never going to get it. I went on Amazon, and they were all sold out, and I was like, oh, crap. But Microsoft had it, and I was like, okay, let's get it now. Missed some some good clearance sales on the thing. Um, and I was like, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. So I ended up getting it, and the thing is awesome, but it's a wired controller. And I was like, I just want something wireless. Um, yeah. and the new Xbox controller was on sale for, I think it was like 40 bucks. It's still on sale right now. If you're listening to this. Um, so I picked that up and I told my dad, I was like, yeah, like, you know, I, I just got the new Xbox uh, controller and, you know, just for my PC. And they were like, Hey, I got, I got an idea for you. Do you want, instead of getting, uh, you, us getting you a, a Christmas gift and a birthday gift since my birthday is the day after Christmas, do you want just do you want to just get an Xbox? <laughs> and I was like, for, uh, for both your birthday and Christmas. And I was like, uh, sure. And they're like, all right, we're going to go out and pick one up today. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm like, what are you insane? Good this luck. is the new Cabbage Patch Kid. Like, it's like picking right. up a Tickle Me Elmo. You're not doing that. <laughs> I was like, just get, just send me an IOU and pick me up a, one in uh, uh, pick me February. up one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pff, you've, that's even optimistic. They're saying April. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, just give me one in April. Uh, just give me an IOU, and we'll, we'll we'll say we'll say that's a thing. Nice man. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about getting the PS5. Eventually, my my son was asking for it, but now he wants the Switch, which oh. I, you know I'm down with, but I can't even find those right now. So, well, it's, right now on the Switch, um, I do believe the the lights are easy to get, super easy to get. So if you're looking for a, a yeah, Switch light, they're everywhere. Um. I have seen the, um, the 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 Animal Crossing version on Best Buy and the Red and Blue on Best Buy as well. Uh, in terms of Amazon, just forget it. Yeah, just check back yeah. Best Buy online, um, and if they don't have one in your store, they definitely will have them online because I have seen those everywhere. So we set up a a thing on my Discord server, which by the way, discord.lowbirds.com is working, <laughs> even. Even while this we're, we're transitioning uh, hosts on, on the website, um, if you go there, we have like a chat room right now where we're helping each other get either an Xbox or PlayStation. If you're looking to get one, anytime we're uh, anytime they do any kind of big drops on any of the ser- sites, uh, we're keeping each other updated. But anyways, um, but one of the things we did at, at the very beginning of it was like, here's the Switch stuff. Don't even ask us. <laughs> it's, it's there. You're able to get them. Um, you just have to look around for it a little bit. And we found that Best Buy had them. So, but yeah, I'm getting an Expo, and I'm pretty sure you're looking to get a PS, the PS Triple, the PS Quadruple, the PS uh, Quad, yeah, Quad Triple, Quintuple, whatever, Quintuple, whatever, <laughs> Quintero, yeah, yeah. We ain't getting that Wii shit. Nope. Um, 
so yeah, uh, I, I know that. Yeah, so you didn't even you didn't even get the new Tony Hawk yet, and it's 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 dope. I'm probably I'm, gonna, I'm get gonna it pick again. it up because my son will play the hell out of it too. We can play yeah. together. So good times. Yeah. By the way, what are you drinking? Since this is a David episode, you're always drinking beer. Well, you know, I did. I know it's early, but I did get off. I just got off work. You know, I have a weird schedule, so don't don't <laughs> don't judge me too harsh. I've, I've put in a full day's work already. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking a. It's Fruitlands. It's a sour from Modern Times, okay. out of uh, San San Diego. Nice. Uh, great brewery. I don't know, man. I was just craving a sour the other day. I'm like, fuck. So yeah. usually you know, sours are kind of like summer and spring beers, but. Right. Well, it's good. still, dude, it's been fucking like 90 degrees here. This is like the first day. It's like actually like it's 71 or something today for the high. It's like fucking perfect. So it's been like fucking summer, like extended bullshit lockdown, not lockdown, but you know, lockdown summer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm over it. Yeah, it's been it's really right. cold here. It's going to get to about 40 uh, tonight and I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I had, I've had my windows open. Oh, all yeah, all night, just just in, just savoring all the coldness, uh, because I've been doing a lot of dieting and working out and stuff. And being nice. cold is a great way to burn calories for free if you can handle it. Cold showers, <laughs> same thing. Yeah, yeah. Force your force your body to heat itself up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and also, I just kind of enjoy it when it's just really cold. Until it gets to about, I want to say about thirty eight. 40 somewhere in there then my body's like all right we're done <laughs> we can't we can't deal with this this is too much <laughs> and then i'm just like oh yeah, yeah i'll just deal with it but yeah let's uh let's talk about the election for a bit because that was a thing that happened um and everybody's losing their shit over it i, I seem to remember hearing about it yeah yeah i voted how does that make you feel <laughs> how dare you sir <laughs> And I didn't vote for Joe <laughs> and I didn't vote for none of the, well, I voted for none of the above for all the other things that were on the, on right. the docket. I love, I love that you have that option, but unfortunately yeah. I don't have that here in my uh, tax form. However, you do have write-ins, uh, yeah, which, which is unfortunate. I'm sure most states, they don't even acknowledge it unless there's an actual candidate mm -hmm. that's registered um, as a write-in candidate, I don't even think they even mark it on the ballot. So all the people that vote Mickey Mouse, it's just, you right. know, um, discarded. It's, yeah, which whatever. I mean, all votes are discarded anyway at the end of the day, <laughs> but um, <laughs> true. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, so I, I voted for Trump and it's not because I like Trump or uh, I think he, well, I, I definitely think he's a lesser of two evils. Um, mostly right. it kind of boiled down to all the mass stuff. So when we last left off on the Lulberts, we were under the impression, uh, you had like basically two camps. It was, you know, the coof is a hoax. It's just another flu. And the people who are like this, it's doomsday. And I was of it's the gonna, opinion. Yeah. It's, we're all going to die. Yeah. I was somewhere in the middle where I was like, eh, it looks like it's a little bit worse than flu. Um, you know, uh, but you know, that's about it. And when we're looking at numbers and metrics and stuff, it's like, you know, 2%, that's a pretty high number. That's a pretty high death rate. Now it doesn't even look like it's that it looks like it's actually less. I mean, like exponentially lower than the flu. Um, Point and it, less than 1%. Yeah. It's something ridiculous. And that's of people who get tested. Um, mm -hmm. and most people don't get tested because it's a, most people get asymptomatic. And I'm thinking right. that the number is somewhere along, along the lines of like 80 or 98% of people who get it uh, are asymptomatic. Um, this is my estimate of, based on the things that I've read mm -hmm. about you know, 89 or 98% uh, asymptomatic. Uh, those 2% are the people who do develop symptoms and, you know, point nothing is, is are the people that die. And the people that die from it usually have some sort of comor comib comid God damn it. Comor <laughs> Co comorbidity. 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 Who learned me to spoke? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Words. Uh, comorbidity. Yeah. Had some sort of, why we're, there's going to be another word that's coming up that I'm going to have trouble saying. <laughs> when we talk about we'll Brian Sovereign. We'll get through it together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. hold hands together. Um, we'll get through this. 
we could do this like uh, Thelma and Louise. Um, That's right. right <laughs> driving off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Oh, no. Um, yeah, of the, they have like, you know, diabetes, uh, you know, type 3 diabetes, rather. Um, you have COPD, former, you know, cancer survivor or cancer, right. um, that sort of thing. Things that have already fucked you up pretty you're, bad. You've already, you're already compromised. Your immune system's completely compromised. Yeah, AIDS. Or, you know, shot. <laughs> right. Yeah. So those sorts of things. So it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Now, the rational thing to do would be like, well, we don't have all the information yet. Let's encourage everybody to do social distancing and masks and, and you know, hand sanitizers and stuff. Encourage businesses sure. that are not essential to close down, not with the force of a gun. I've never advocated that. Um, just do all that stuff. Now that we know that it's mostly crap, let's just tell the people who are most likely to die from this thing to stay at home. Don't stay have visitors country. over, all that stuff. Um <clears throat> but that's not what we're doing. Now we're doing another rounds of lockdowns because of cases. And what are cases? Just people who test positive. Right. Oh, how? Why do we know that more people are testing positive? Well, it's because we're making everybody get tested. So of course the cases are going to go up. But all these people are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't make any sense why we're doing this. Now, see, I'm a healthcare worker. Get testing us. That makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Having us get vaccines. That makes sense. Um, but that's, that's a completely private thing between our employer and stuff. And that's kind of important to do when we're working with people in a hospital setting where those types of people are probably going to be more likely to die. That all makes sense. But yeah, they're more vulnerable. Absolutely. Why are we still doing this? Eight, eight months out of the two weeks to, to bend the, or to stop the curve. Or to curb the what is what the fuck was it <laughs> to curb the yeah, peak or whatever the, the fuck they're slow the curve or, yeah. yeah slow the curve right it was just supposed to be two weeks just two weeks and we're just, we're on just a, just month. a tip <laughs> you know what I mean oh yeah yeah just two weeks just just a tip basically just the tip and mm -hmm. uh, that turned out to be uh almost we're we're gonna go a full year of uh, after you know two weeks. Oh, at easily. least, if, least. Not, if not longer, not if not longer, uh, guaranteed two will. year, uh, a year, mm -hmm. guaranteed a year. Uh, how long, much what, longer after March, that? You would say, right? Who knows? Who who knows? Um, yeah, this it's all crap, and uh, some of these things are getting struck down. Like a lot of states are saying they're canceling Thanksgiving. Uh, they're going to outlaw Thanksgiving. <laughs> California, I'm looking at you. Um, yeah, shocker. Yeah, uh, I think. What was it? Uh, Virginia said that they were going to cancel Thanksgiving and make it illegal, but all of the police uh, police um, uh, departments have said, like, no, this is an unconstitutional law, and we're required to obey and you know, defend the Constitution, and that's an unconstitutional law. We're not going to enforce it. So there's some optimism. There's some light sure. at the end of the tunnel, but not really. <laughs> not really. Yeah. Well, uh, the, and I you know, depending on what you look at, there's evidence that shows that these lockdowns, you know, which I think you so aptly pointed out, prisons have lockdowns, right? No, yeah, they don't actually they don't actually work, you know, for the yeah, most part. Lockdowns are for prison inmates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work in a mental institution. We do do lockdowns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's for people who are institutionalized, and 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 quarantines are for the sick, and it's so right. it's so. It's so draconian. And and I, I remember people always saying like, oh, if the state cracks down on things too hard, people will finally rebel. So maybe it's a good thing that we should encourage this stuff. I was of that opinion. I probably would have said maybe three years ago. But the more I kind of look around, I'm like, no, that's not true. That's pe people cheer on any kind of draconian stuff. They just love it. They think it's the greatest thing ever. I mean, they still love mm -hmm. farm su subsidies. They think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Fighting something like a sugar tariff just forget it because everybody loves sugar tariffs. Even the people who are like ardently against um, high fructose corn syrup and, <laughs> and right. all that stuff, they just love love these they sugar love tariffs. Where's that coming from? Why is it so prevalent? Right, just because that's what you know. People love. Uh, people hate freedom. I think that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. So we have a situation where people are being locked in their houses. They're going crazy to the point where they're committing suicide mm -hmm. and. You would think that if that theory was true, that they would be up in arms and fighting it 
They're not. They're encouraging more of it. They're saying we're not doing enough. <laughs> and it's insane. People are losing their, their livelihoods uh, up to the point where they're committing suicide. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, hey, man, we got to save grandma. It's like, well, grandma's already safe. I'm sorry. It, she's already safe. I think everybody's pretty much got it by now. Um, and it's just ridiculous. And it's never going to end. It's never going to end. Ever, ever going to end. Um, well, yeah, that's all things. It's never going to go away. It's, yeah. you know, it's something that's it's going to be like a recurring seasonal thing because, you know, obviously you, during at least it, maybe not here in the in where I'm at the winter you get you tend to get less sunlight right so you get less vitamin D you're getting probably less exercise mm-hmm. you're increasing your sugar intake you know all these things that like help slow your immune system and make you more prevalent to to or susceptible to to catching it so that's I think that's part of the reason you're seeing a rise in the cases, but I, I don't see like a corresponding rise in fatalities, you know, like that's the whole thing is like the number of positive cases is one thing, but the deaths aren't like commensurate with the spike in cases that right. I, at least that I've seen. And I'm not, you know, even when you compare it with like a two week lag, Mm-hmm. I think that's what they what they say is like, anytime you bring up like, look, the deaths don't correspond with the cases. Like, well, you have, you have to compensate for, uh, the two week lag and, you know, case, uh, contracting it and dying. It's like, mm-hmm. but even when you do that, it still doesn't show up. It's, it's just so crap. And on top of that, like, okay, you're going to lock everybody in their houses and everybody's going to be vitamin D, D deficient. Well, here's a big question for you. Um, what do they show? What I think are the people who get uh, hospitalized f- from COVID-19 people who have to actually go to the hospital and, and, you know, and actually get admitted into the hospital. Um, what do you think that they, they test for and find out they're uh, lacking in vitamin D? So all the people that you're locking in their houses, right. <laughs> not getting vitamin D, making them more susceptible to being hospitalized from COVID-19 when they do catch it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's so stupid. And the politicians and, and are not going to get let off of this thing because they have an incentive to keep pushing all these lockdown stuff because if they don't and people die, then they go, they're not doing enough. And then their opposition wins. So there's an incentive mm-hmm. for them to lock down um, no matter what. And if they do dot lock down, they say, well, we did everything that we could. We tried. Let's do more. Yeah, it wasn't enough. Me. You can't win. Or <laughs> you, you literally can't win. Um, nope. Uh, eventually we're going to le- probably just end up with just having masks as a norm. I think that's going to be the end result uh, 10 years down the line, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of hopeless and sad, but um, a lot of people are fighting back and not wearing masks and doing civil disobedience. And I, I applaud all of them. I can't do it cause I'm in the healthcare industry, but I encourage anybody right. who, who wants to do it, to do it, who can risk it. Um, if you can't risk it, if you're not in a position to risk it, I completely understand. I'm in, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm in the mm-hmm. same camp. Uh, but if, if you're thinking about doing that, um, and you, you, you don't really have a lot to lose or you're in an industry where you're fine, you'll be fine. Uh, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. I encourage you and I applaud you and cheer you on 100%. Yeah. So do you want to talk right. about 4k? <laughs> 4k, poor K. Well, 4K, 4K resolutions. <laughs> Speaking Spanish now, Jim. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, first, first you vote for Vi- Biden. Now you're speaking Spanish. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> or maybe I did. Who knows? Maybe I'm just as senile as he is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. So. No, um, for those of you who are not familiar, I am a fan of Sovereign Tech, even though I, I still ha- I have some political disagreements with them on, on a lot of things. But when it comes to security and and all that stuff and computers and stuff, we're pretty much in the same boat. And I def- the, my biggest disagreements come with his taste in music and movies. Um, <laughs> oh, God, some serious hot takes. Like, I can understand people liking The Matrix. I, I get it. I get it. I'm not the biggest uh, fan of that movie. Hmm? I say, yeah, I mean, it's... It follows the hero's journey like to the T. It's mm. but you can the aesthetics are a little off, but I think the story is solid. It's just you know it's the nineties and the leather is a little is a little uh it's, I don't want to say dated. It just doesn't play well. I guess I don't mind if something's dated. I love old horror movies. I love old sci fi. But there's something kind of yeah cheesy as fuck about some of that stuff. 
But I still like the I still like the first movie and maybe, you know, a little bit of the second one or most of the second one. Yeah, even if you want to make the case that it doesn't hold up, I mean, even if we were in the nineties, I would have said like, it's all right. And I at the, at the end of the day, it's all right. But I mean Mm-hmm. I think everybody like thinks it's some, some sort of revolutionary like oh wow nothing has ever been done like this. It's like yeah well the visuals have never been done like that before. But the whole like the world you know today isn't really what it seems. That that has been that's common right. trope. It's a I common trope. It it's entertaining. Good, it doesn't make it bad. Yeah, they, they live. Kind of, they innovated it in a or you know in a in a unique in a cool way. I think. But yeah, it wasn't anything I, new. I, but they put their own spin on it, which I mostly uh, enjoy. <laughs> I don't even agree with that. <laughs> like, I think they you don't live. Have to. Yeah, I think they live. <laughs> That's oh, a good yeah. example of something. You know, like, oh, you know, um, you know that there was a red pill moment in there where he put the glasses on. Oh yeah, I love they live. I, ha- I got on Blu-ray, but mm-hmm. Jim, they live didn't have karate men, but it's not in four K and Blu-ray. machine guns. <laughs> Although the fight scene between Roddy Piper and uh, oh, what's his name? I don't. Yeah, I forget his Keith, name too. Keith David. Keith David. Yeah, that was you know that was a good one. I love that movie. It's great. John Carpenter is great. <laughs> I love, huge fan. Yeah. So. But so uh, Brian, Brian Sovereign did a, a whole podcast. Um, and in this whole podcast, he spent a bit, a bit of it, not the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he did a whole podcast? About about 4K uh, and why, th- why he says it's bullshit. Now, he does make a few good points, and I want to commend him on a few things. He talks about 4K streaming. Yeah, that's mostly true. Um, what he talks mm-hmm. about 4K, 4K streaming is that you're not really getting a true 4K experience when you stream it. Um, and if you were to stream it, uh, it would eat a lot of your data. And a lot of uh, you know cable companies and, and data providers are pushing for 4K and five you know we're pushing for f- 4K and 5G as well uh, to to promote this uh, t- technology. And at the end of the day, you're not really getting a four, true 4K experience. Um, what you are getting is a big data bill. And that's no good. Right. <laughs> so that's probably not a good thing. Um, a lot of the upscaling that you see, like there's lots of movies that weren't, that don't benefit from 4K, but they upscale it, which you can upscale. I mean, there's Blu-ray players that upscale 4K just right. fine. Um and you're going to pay extra for a 4K upscale when, you know, if you could just get a 4K Blu-ray player that upscales, you're just overpaying for stuff. It's it's a scam at the end of the day. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. Like, yeah. So there was a few things in this thing that he said, but there was a lot of other things that weren't true. Definitely weren't true. Um, he talks about how pretty much any any video that wasn't recorded in 4k does not benefit from it. It's not true. So, th- so the 35 millimeter format, which was a standard format for film up until they started going a lot more digital in the nineties, the late, late nineties, early two thousands, when digital right. was still in its infancy, all of those that in that era was about, you know, 1080p until later on when they started being able to uh, record higher in 4k in the, I want to say the tens, is when it started really kind of catching hold. But for that brief, for that window, 1080p is fine. And a lot of a lot of those movies that are coming out in 4K re-releases are just upscaled. That's a complete scam. However, 35 millimeter, the grains that are in, you know, the, the photophonetic grains that are in there kind of pretty much roughly average to about 4K. So if you took like an older movie from the 80s that were shot on film, 35 millimeter, and put it in 4K, you will get a benefit from 4K. So if you want to get uh, war games in 4K, that'll work. That's perfectly fine, and you actually will get the benefits of 4- of 4K. Any any film shot in 4K or in film is going to show up just fine in uh, 4K. Especially all the Quentin Tarantino movies, which were shot, all shot on film. Uh, he's been a person who was just like, no, I I make film, I make films. They're shot on film, and. Uh, they always look great. <laughs> if you so, if you shoot a movie on film, even if it's thirty-five millimeter, it benefits. I saw what was it, uh, The Master, and I had no understanding of you know seventy millimeter film or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to see this movie, not because it was in any kind of format or anything, and I didn't really care about formats up until then. Um, and I saw. I wanted to see that movie just because it had to do with Scientology. It was basically like telling the story about early Scientology 
with a nice little new narrative on top of it. But it's not quote it's not Scientology quote unquote. Um, and I wanted to see it just because you know I've always been kind of interested in you know criticism in Scientology protesting long before you know 4chan and all that stuff came around. And I was like, what's, what's 70 millimeter? Uh, sure, I'll pay a little bit more to see it in 4 uh, whatever that means. Uh, that sounds like it's probably more gooder. And I was just like blown away by the experience. Just like, oh my God, this movie is ab- like looks gorgeous in this, in this format. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I, I, I need more of this. Now that I think they say that like f- would kind of, I think uh, something like 6K is like 70 millimeter. IMAX something is something along the lines of would translate to 4K. It's not exact um, because you know they're completely different formats. Uh, one's analog and one's uh, digital, so you can't have like it's perfectly 8K. No, no. but the, you know you can kind of do comparisons on how the grains are, uh, how many grains are in the in the film. It kind of roughly translates to that. So there have been people who have been interested in this high fidelity stuff, and people during the video age when people were just limited to laser discs and stuff who wanted to pay good money to have a film um, projector in their house and buy those movies in, in that or release or borrow them and project them in their own houses. And those are people who are the ultra cinemaphiles in those days. So the, the idea when he talks about in this uh, podcast that for, you know, that no one cared about 4k, you know, up until then, like, no, no, there's people who were pushing for this, this kind of, you know, high fidelity, even before 4k wasn't even even a thing so that's wrong but he's i really want to bust him on this because this is really bad he t- spends like a whole bunch of time i think it's about a good 10 minutes talking about video interpolation and i know i'm saying that wrong correct me right now interpol uh, uh i don't know I, basically I the idea how he said it i don't even <laughs> nobody knows how to say it anyway because every tv manufacturer uh has their own kind of catch term for this and it kind of gives like this impression that you're giving like like a soap opera effect when you get a new tv usually it's enabled by default and it every movie and everything that you watch always looks like it's in you know uh 60 frames a second and he talks about this in terms of 4k and he talks about how it's uh simulating 4k technology by using this mode that's not what it is and it's even on a lot of 1080p um televisions as well it was not enabled in mine because I had like a, some Korean uh, TV that doesn't even have that option. And I had first seen it when I went to my parents' house and the, on their new TV that they bought since I, uh, since I last saw them. And I was like, why does it look like it's in, I know this, this movie is only 30 frames a second. Why does it look like it's, you know, sh- being shown at like 60 frames a second? What's going on? And I, yeah, I went in, in the, the settings and was messing around with it and I turned it off. And when the next time they uh, watched the TV with me, they were like, the TV looks better now. Like what's going on with the TV? And I was like, oh yeah, there's a setting that I, that I found that made everything look weird. And I fixed it. And they were like, oh, thank you. Like, like we couldn't figure out like what it was. I th- we just thought maybe HD TVs were terrible, but that has <laughs> nothing to do with 4k. Like the whole technology has nothing to do with 4k it has to do with frame rates. It's basically calculating. All right. What's this frame look like? What's the next frame look like? Let's kind of do, something in the middle so that way we can double the amount yeah so we can double the amount of frames and he spends like a good portion of this thing as an attack on 4k it has nothing to do with 4k um so there are lots of movies that benefit from 4k if you want to get a 4k blu-ray do that if you're a hardcore cinemaphile and you want to actually get a copy of the film go ahead and do that uh best of luck to you (laughs) (laughs) and your checkbook and your theater room yeah get a theater room right but um, at the end of the day, like 4K, there's there's a lot of things you can get that are 4K that you're going to get a good experience from. I only, you know, try to get 4K media on Blu-ray. Any kind of ones that I, you download off the internet, unless you're downloading like a 50K or excuse me, fif- at least a 50 gigabyte file, you're wasting your time. Um, but that's only when I want to experience a movie in 4K. I have a 4K monitor and I know that I'm going to watch it in my 4K monitor and just experience it. Uh, movies that were shot in IMAX, movies that were shot on film, uh, I'll get to 4K, but I'll even look up before I get it. I mean, sorry, I wouldn't download it illegally. <laughs> I get it from the public library, legally. Bar- lawfully yeah, and legally. Right. Yeah, lawfully and legally. Never would break the law. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something. <clears throat> um, 
and so I've you know I've watched movies in 4K and I can tell the difference. Um, I can tell the difference. I, in fact, when I go to movie theater, I can actually tell whether or not the movie was shot in 4K or not. Um, and it, there's little things that I notice, like oh, I can see the individual hairs coming off of their head in, with high fidelity, where it's 1080p, you can't really do that. Um, so yeah, there's little things that I can pick up on, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm watching a 1080p movie shot in 1080p. That's fine. I noticed that when I saw Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens, I was like, oh, this is 1080p. Interesting. That they would spend well, I, all this money to make a movie and it's only 1080p. <laughs> all right, right, I'll take it. Yeah. Especially that franchise. Yeah. Like bringing it back or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think about the movie itself. Yeah. You're rebooting or, or trying to reinvigorate that franchise. You think they'd, and it's fucking Disney. Yeah. And, you know, and they didn't think, do it. Yeah. You think they'd <laughs> go with all, you know, all out. Yeah, but they didn't. But I think, like you said, I think it is a lot like the source material. Like it's almost like vinyl. Like it's cool. I, you know, I love having records, but it's also about how it was recorded. You know, a, a, like a record that's recorded in analog is going to sound a lot better than a record. You know, if this, than if the source of the record was digital. Right. So I, well, I think it's like the same. You know, kind of the same thing with 4K or or, or streaming and all that. We can get into the whole digital and vinyl thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, no, I know. Uh, and I know, I know Danny is actually listening to us live right now because the Lulberts is, is streaming live uh, for those of you who uh, haven't, haven't noticed this. Um, if you pay attention to any, anywhere I, I stream or do social media, you'll, you'll know and get alerts. Or if you're a Patreon, you'll get alerted when you go live. Um, however, the whole analog thing, uh, it really depends. Um, and there's no real way to know. Uh, sometimes you'll get the artist who will brag about, oh yeah, we, we recorded this on like an actual eight track or a 12 track, uh, analog and they'll brag about it. So when you get something like that, there's a better chance. It's not even guaranteed. There's a better chance right. if you get the vinyl, um, you're going to get uh, a complete, a true analog thing. But most musicians now, even the, even the people who are really into this stuff, like the flaming lips at the end of the day, they're recording digital, <laughs> they're recording digital, but they're recording at such a high fidelity that there's been tests that have been done as best as they can do, where they tried to give people, people who claim to be audiophiles and test them and say like, <laughs> can you tell which is analog and which is not? Um, nope. <laughs> they can't do it unless there is that kind of warmth that comes from anal uh, from, from a record. And that's just a complete artifact of the medium. It has nothing to do with the actual quality of the audio. Um, sure, analog is infinite, um, uh, infinite bit rate. Uh, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to um, the weakest link. And a lot of times, the weakest link is wh where they're recording it, or sometimes how they're mastering it. So even if even right. if they're like, we recorded this in on analog they would send it off to a master and a master would be like, Oh, we're doing it. Digitally they, some lazy. They do it digital. Right. So yeah. It, yeah, there we go. And it's we funny. Save X amount by doing it digital. Yeah. I've, I've actually had people over my house who were like, Oh yeah. Analog. It's so great and beautiful. I'm like, really do you like Dr. Dre or Snoop Dogg? And like, Oh, I love it. And I'll put it on and they'll be listening to it. And they're like, Oh yeah, this is great. You know? And I'm like, well, what do you think of the sound is, do you think that it's the true oh, that's analog? All, that's all, that's gotta be all digital. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, it's great. And I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. And I'll show them the cover and it says digitally remastered. <laughs> it, it all comes down to, yeah, the weakest oh. link. <laughs> yeah, it all comes down to the weakest link. Uh, it always comes down to the weakest link. Yeah. How, however, the reason why I buy vinyl is not so much the the warmth or anything like that. It all has to do with like aesthetics. Like I like being taking it out the record, playing it, investing time mm -hmm. into making sure that it sounds great. And that makes me want right. be more focused and invested in what's being played. And you get the artwork and the linear notes and everything's tactile. And I, yeah, I get something I to show and the big artwork. And yeah, it's, it's great. I always thought that just with CDs back in the day, I loved taking it out the, the liner notes and reading the lyrics or just having mm -hmm. like physically in my hand. So same same effect yeah so that's, that's why that's, i don't i'd rather buy dvds i you know obviously i stream a lot but i love having like physical media you mm -hmm. know something i can hold even books like i got obviously got ebooks all that but there's something about like physically holding a book in my hand or a movie record whatever it's like i don't know it's, just, it's more of a complete experience i guess yeah. in a way i bet you're opining for the days of laserdisc <laughs> <laughs> we have the big stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I mean, I invested. saw them, but my dad never had them. Like I, I went to my buddy's house and I would see him, but 
yeah so i'm familiar with what they look like but never had one directly yeah so yeah uh, there, there's concept. a lot of th- oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i say same concept yeah absolutely yeah so at the end of the day like brian did say a lot of good things about 4k but he uh, said a lot of bad things no 4k is great if you can find things that were recorded on film 35 millimeter or if uh things were shot in actual 4k digital um you can get a lot of benefit from it if you have the ability if you if your eyes are good enough which by the way he has a four eyes so it's probably why he doesn't think it looks any different <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. Learn to see good. <laughs> see, see more gooder. Uh, like me, uh, I have really good vision, but um, I was told by my uh, optometrist, like, I want to say 20 years ago, like, well, you're farsighted, but your eyes, like, work overtime in order to perceive, uh, uh, you know, just hmm. as good or better than 2020 vision. Um, but as you get older, your eyes are going to start getting more tired and you're going to actually start experiencing being farsighted or nearsighted i don't remember what he said it's been 20 years and i haven't seen anything since my eyes still work great however i there is a way for me to relax my eyes and once i relax my eyes everything kind of gets a little bit blurry and it's hard for me to start like okay focus 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 it takes a while and effort and mental you know effort to like okay i gotta start seeing clear again and i've actually i just did it to myself Okay, yeah, because <laughs> just talking about it made me like, oh yeah, that's I can relax my eyes. That's right. Um, but once yeah, you know, once I actually focus and get thin. my, once I get my bearings back in, like I I see clearly again, and I can actually pick up differences in four K. Two K and four K, yeah, they're they're not too different, but I can notice it if I actually put for some effort. But four K and ten eighty p, oh, I can notice it a mile away. It doesn't matter if my TV is six feet away or not. I can notice it if it's if it's big enough, and and I and uh, I have giant hands as we talked about the Duke controller. I have big hands, so um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to have big hands to have Duke, and you know what they say about people who have big hands? They need bigger controllers. They need bigger controllers. Yep. Mm-hmm. They see really well. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so are you getting, uh, are you getting a PlayStation or are you getting an X bone? No, I'm, I'm not getting either for a while, man. I'm, I usually, dude, I usually wait a while when the first, at least the first cycle of the next gen consoles come out. Cause a, they're expensive as hell. And mm. usually they find out there's some kind of bug or, you know, yeah, yeah. flaw. So, and, uh, honestly, you don't want dude, to ride I, ring I just, of death. right. I just don't even, uh, have time to play mini games right now so there's really no um burning the impetus for me to get it but but down the line man i'm i'm i i was an xbox guy like i had the ps2 and i loved it and i was like fuck the xbox but then when the 360 came out i picked up one of those and i loved it you know i loved the controller i loved the system except the d-pad yeah it's pretty bad actually now that you mention it (laughs) <laughs> um, but just just the feel of it, gen in general, you know, fit really well in my in my hands, which are, are fairly large, by the way. Yeah. And <laughs> so then when the uh, Xbox One and PS4 were coming out, I was, you know, I'm just gonna like, let's see how it plays out. And the PS4 obviously had, you know, better hardware initially, and but the Xbox has come out and they're like, well, you have to like have all these licenses if you want to like sell your game or lend it to your friend. And I was like, fuck you. So I bought the PS4, never got the Xbox One. Oh yeah, that was a thing when the Xbox One came out. Yeah, and it also yeah, he had had the connect, always connected. Right. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. cool. Nope. <laughs> to quote the great philosopher James Rolfe, what were they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They, 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 I liked how they backpedaled onto that. Oh no, you don't need oh, to yeah. connect anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're... Oh no, yeah. <laughs> now you can just borrow any game you want. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we meant to do the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Right? Sometimes are jokes. But... I was fooling y'all. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> but so yeah, I was like, fuck this. But um, yeah, I'll just wait for a while and see. And and honestly, like the PS4 had way better exclusives. Um. I don't know now that Xbox has bought all kinds of studios and shit. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see what happens. And they bought Bethesda. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So. Oof. But so here's the thing. Um, I know Microsoft, they're going to put stuff on the PC. And I think they've even talked about they're not going to fight um, 
PlayStation anymore because they want to kind of be somewhere between a console and, and PC. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, uh, maybe I should get back into getting a console, but I'm not going to play first person shooters with a controller. Go die in a fire. <laughs> this is not happening. Um, I had to deal with that to play Halo. Um, I'm not doing it again. Um, I got my Duke controller. They reissued the Duke controller a couple years ago, and I ended up getting the thing. Um, and I fucking love that controller. And the first thing I did with it, I was like, all right, I'm going to buy Halo on Steam. And just to, just to go back to nostalgia, and I was playing it, I was like, yeah, I remember when I was playing this now. Fuck, I wish I could play this with a keyboard and mouse. <laughs> It would be so much better. Um, and then I just was oh, like, yeah, all right, there, I'm putting it down. I'm getting no, the keyboard. Yeah, there's and no mouse. comparison. Yeah. But it's great for other kind yeah, of things. No and comparison. I do play. I, I love PC. Hmm? I, say, I, I love PC gaming, man. It's just, it's, you know, it's kind of pricey if you want to get a, a, a good rig. And like, if I want to play with my son, I'm like, oh, now I got to buy two PCs. Or, you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. the console is like something I can just have there. We can both do it or he can do it by himself, you mm-hmm. know just a little more like user friendly i guess yeah and it is great i like playing consoles for certain kinds of games anything that's like a platformer uh you know i want to play with a controller um certain types of not first person shooters that's that's for damn sure any any kind of game where you have to spend Mm -hmm. a lot of time aiming i don't want to do it with a controller and if i can see something like conquer's bad fur day where there's sections of the game that are kind of like a first person shooter the controller parts suck, but you know, it's, I can deal with it. If it's only like certain segments of the game, I can deal with it. Not but if it's, whole. yeah, if it's mostly platforming and stuff, all right, I can take it. Um, some kinds of RPGs or two, 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 two D games. I always want to play with the controller and I want a good D pad. And it looks like the new Xbox has, has a better D pad than the place than the PlayStation. And it looks like they just improved the, the D pad. But nothing's ever going to replace, uh, you know, my the 8-bit do. Well, my, no, did the 8-bit, uh, the the two, uh, excuse me. Uh, damn it. I got you. The D-pad <laughs> on the Duke is not good. <laughs> it was never good. It was serviceable, but it was not good. Uh, I was able to play Tony Hawk with it. So, yeah. Nah. It's all that matters. It's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go make me fucking download this thing today. Tell you that right now. I'm telling you, man, it, it's pretty damn good. The new Tony Hawk uh, remake is it's pretty lit. I'm not going to lie. And I wanted to see what kind of uh, next-gen patch they're going to do with it, which they might. Who knows? It's only a $40 game. It's not a AAA game. Right. But the Tony Hawk um, Pro Skater 1 and 2, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. It does bring back the nostalgia. I haven't played it in a while. I've been pretty hooked on Rocket League lately. Rocket League and... Um, the new, uh, well, not the new. Well, the it's a remastered version of uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd games one and two deluxe that just came out for the Switch and PC. It's going to come mm. out for the Xbox and uh, PlayStation Two, but PlayStation oh, also, nice. not PlayStation Two. <laughs> That'd be great if they were issued new games on PlayStation Two. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I've been playing. I've been playing. I've been playing those a lot more than Tony Hawk. But it's good to hop into Tony Hawk and just uh, you know try to try to do like a three million point. yeah <laughs> three million point trick and be like yeah did it all right <laughs> let's play some rocket league now <laughs> word yeah so uh there was one other thing in my show notes that i that i was said we were going to talk about and uh of course i have it up why, why would i um not have my show notes never mind the clicking we to talk about the covid19 american idol so yeah the election i i voted and I voted for mm-hmm. Trump, and I, I, I there was a lot of people who were pushing back on me on this and be like, "Oh, you should never vote if you're a real libertarian." It's like, okay, real libertarian, real sure. libertarian arguments again. Real, true libertarian TM. True um, Scott, yeah, <laughs> true Scotsman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can understand some some of the voluntarist positions on it, but I don't consider myself right. a voluntarist. Um, haven't for quite a while. Um, I've been kind of skeptical of the NAP since about 2012 ish. Um, I think yeah, you've been consistent I, on that. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm not consistent. Well, I've been part. I've been changing as as I what I because I don't really have any loyalty other than what's true, and and I have a lot of problems with a completely axiomatic NAP position. I do think that it's good. It's good rule of thumb. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, there's people in the chat right now saying PC Master Race. Uh, I, yeah, PC Master Race for sure. <laughs> PC Master Race for sure. Uh, but I do I do like my Switch. And, uh, yeah. you know, having an Xbox playing 4K. I'm cool with being a, con- I'm co- I'm cool with being a console plebe, man. I'm not scared. Yeah. I, I know I know where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, PC Master Race all the way. But you know what? Sometimes it's good to bust out of the old console. But anyways, yeah. So I, I, I do agree with the NAP insofar as I think it's a good rule of thumb. Um, I think that's what, like, the first kind of metric you should test anything against. Like, if you have some new policy, like, well, does it violate the NAP? Like, okay. Let's test it against some other kind of metrics as well. Let's just not just limit ourselves to just that because there are lots of examples where the NAP will – lead to some pretty awful, disastrous, Shady terrible stuff. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, okay, fine. I can't smoke on my patio. Doorbell bombs. Like, there's lots of things that I'm just like, yeah, this is not <laughs> this is not very conducive <laughs> um, to to uh, what anybody would want. Anybody. any Anybody would want. Right. Um, there are people who would say, and Rothbard included, said, um, like, even if we had a purely, like, NAP society, um, you know, and it turned out to be disastrous. I, you know, I'd still would want it because it's still, it's still the most ethical system. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, I don't care if a Marxist can show me, you know, using pure logic and deduction and reasoning that their ethical system is perfect. I'm not going to stand in, bre- in a bread line because, you know, you've worked out some, some athiomatic truth, uh, <laughs> that says it's most, that most ethical. I'm not going to stand because it worked on paper. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, everything works on paper except democracy. Wait. <laughs> democracy doesn't even make sense on paper uh, so yeah Preach. um so yeah like but if i had a choice between like if it was up to me and it's not if it was up to me to say like well you get to choose who's going to be president you can have the um the guy who said he's going to beat you 30 times a day but this guy says he's going to beat you 50 times a day who are you going to vote for obviously you want to vote for the 50 right and i'm going to be like well Look, there's no real way that my vote is ever going to change anything. I was going to go there anyway just because you have a none of the above option, and I want to see none of the above actually win some election somewhere in Nevada. Um, it's probably not going to happen, but that'd be great if it did. Since I'm there, you know, I might as well say, ah, eh, whatever. I'll throw my, uh, I'll throw my one piece of straw on the camel's back. <laughs> for well, yeah, uh, it's it's a great um, it's a great way to say you know, fuck you both, basically. Does it mean anything yeah. in the NAP? Probably not, but at least you, you know, at least you said it. Yeah. And usually, even with a terrible Democrat, like there's at least one or two things I could, I could agree with them on something uh, legalized weed or something, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's basic stuff. So. Something, right? But there's nothing that, uh, that I agree with Biden on. And I, I looked through and I was like, I can't find anything I agree with him. Sure, he said that, you know, he's going to legalize weed. But I know that's not true. Uh, how many politicians well, I mean, run on I'm yeah. gonna legalize weed and they don't? Barack. Well, I know. Did Obama say that? I don't remember. But I, I don't think he did. I think he he said, nah. uh, yeah, he's not for marijuana legalization or any drug legalization. But you know, he did smoke weed and uh, maybe uh, maybe a little blow. <laughs> so he's perfectly okay maybe with throwing people in jail for that. But you know, him doing it. Oh, of course, no, he wouldn't go to jail for nah. that. No. Or or Kamala too, you know, for a current for current year, yeah, <laughs> made made her made her fucking livelihood or her career out of that, yeah. So arresting black kids for not showing up on school in time and smoking, yeah, smoking or threat- weed yeah, and thre- maybe a little blow. <laughs> she, she didn't didn't she threaten um, parents with jail if their kids were truant? Yep, I, I, yeah, I, I think she actually did. Read that out, yeah. Or send it. Yeah, like, Kamala Jesus. Harris was by far the worst person to ever run for for president oh, this election, God. and it's disastrous. But there's a lot of things that I liked about Trump, uh, a lot of things I didn't like, and some of the things sure. I was like, well, you've been the best on this particular issue than any president that I can remember. He's been decent about war. Yeah, um, I mean, comparatively tried, speaking, comparatively he speaking, right? He's been good on, on, on the scale, right? Like, yeah. on, on he's he's tried to ramp it down a little. I don't know, you know what I mean? He's he hasn't started a war, here. right? Exactly, he hasn't escalated it. He's been the best. It. He's been the best in my lifetime, just for the simple fact that he hasn't started a single war. Better, yeah, better than Bush, better than Obama. So, got a better few than, more months, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not over yet. 
<laughs> some stuff Something. with Iran. Yeah, yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but he has <laughs> he's nominated. I think his name is Douglas Miller. I could be wrong. Um, to the advisory board, uh, advisor to the Pentagon, and the guy that he nominated to be the the head of the Pentagon or the DOJ has, is really good on uh, or all all things considered. Uh, sure, <laughs> Re- relative, yeah, relatively Relative speaking, scale. he's been pretty good. Right. And if your if your goal is to stop war, uh, the guy that he nominated to be his advisor. That you couldn't pick a better person. You simply could That's not pick a better person to to get troops right. out of it. And he's already talking about pulling troops out, which is great. I'm all for it's that. Not, I'm all for absolutely. that. There's three big things that I would like m- the government to do right away. It'd be like uh, drug legalization, stop the war on drugs, stop actual wars uh, abroad. And, uh, well, maybe we can start war- a war on broads. That might be a good idea. Oh, wait. Is hey, this is or we're, or we're live. Uh, and, um, <laughs> Shit. damn it. This thing's on. Hello. Uh, and, uh, the federal reserve. Like those are the big three. I think yeah, exactly. need to be stopped. And if he can yeah, stop three- one of those things, I'm happy. I, that's willing for me to say, like, I'll give you my one piece of straw to put on your camel's back. Hopefully, right. hopefully yours is the one that breaks first, <laughs> even though the, the chances of that, in, nearly impossible, nearly impossible that my vote will swing election, even though I live in a swing state or one of the states that was, that was um, cont- contested. Uh, so, right. Well, yeah. yeah, you guys, everyone was like, what's up with Nevada? Dragging your feet, you know. We're, ele- we're like, all, what, eight a- electoral or six electoral votes? We don't matter right. at the end of the day. It's, <laughs> it's not going to matter at the end I mean, of the rel- day. I mean, relatively small, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, so no, like, yeah. I, and I, I would I would have voted, man. Was, I would actually like to just go vote against like all the judges and <laughs> you know uh, and vote against like all the propositions. I just I, I just couldn't be. I, I know you can do the mail in. I just I couldn't trouble myself with it this time. But I mean, if I if I was, you, it's called like the lesser of two evils, right? Which I hate that expression. I mean, it's accurate, but it's like because you, you're still choosing evil. I look at it as like you know, the best bad choice, like yeah. which, what's the best bad choice you have to make? Like they're, they're both bad choices. Right. But what's the best bad choice you have to make between the choices you have? I mean, obviously you don't, you can always choose not to vote, but if you feel like, you know, you're going to, I still think it's a bad argument. I still think it's a bad argument at the end of the day. I, I'm right. I'm much more of a fan of Lysander. Well, I'm not making it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, like the self, I'm not yeah, making it, but I'm saying like, that's what a lot of people, re- re- yeah, revolt or resort to, or yeah. Because at the end of the day, advocate. like the the Democrat or Republican candidate is going to win. That's just that's just the fact of that fact of the world. They're 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 going to be the nominee. It's never going to be the Libertarian Party um, right now. I mean, maybe maybe in twenty years when they get their crap together and they stop nominating, you know, Gary Johnsons and. Uh, <laughs> candidates that pander to the woke woke left as if they're going to ever vote for them. They're never going right. to vote for you. Stop bothering with them um, and alienating your, your, your base. Um, mm-hmm. I did a, I, we did a, I did a live stream where I drove a bus through a desert for eight hours. Um, you go look for the latest desert bus stream on that, my YouTube channel. That, and, <laughs> and I went on this long tirade about why I hate, why I was not going to vote for, J- for Joe Jorgensen, which I was tempted to do for quite a while. And, and it wasn't just the, that one tweet that she made. There was a bunch of other things that she was doing and Spike Jorgensen were doing that. I was like, I'm out, 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 out <laughs> I'll vote for Trump. Yep. I'll vote for Trump. What and at the end of the day, what did my vote matter? Not at all. Not at all. Even if he won, even if he won, it still wouldn't have mattered at all (laughs) because unless it came down to Nevada and he won by one vote or even maybe 10 votes, you know, because some voter fraud or something like that, um, you know, in either way or miscounting, you know, some error, human error at the end of the day, it wouldn't have came down to me. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't there a movie back in the day called like Swing Vote? It was like the one guy that would like decide the whole like presidential election. I didn't. I, I, With I Kevin just remember Costner. the premise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. It was uh, such like, a stupid movie. <laughs> I, know. I just remember the trailer, and I'm like, oh god. That could have been you. That could have been you, Jim. You missed it your. Could have been me. Though. Yeah, it could have been me, but it wasn't. It'll like, never be. <laughs> nah, four, four years from now, right? You never. Yeah. 
So yeah, so I ended up voting for Trump, and it's not because I like Trump, but I, I do appreciate a good troll, and he's really been good at that. So I mean, that might have been worth the vote alone just to have another troll, uh, oh, a sure. troll in office for another four years. Oh God, that might have been dude, worth it. Way, you know what's? I guess it's your form of entertainment. Would you rather she have a troll or to watch? You know, Grandpa Joe slide off the you know deep end into dementia in on prime time. Yeah, you know I mean, like that would have been. That's a good yeah. argument for having Joe Biden. That's a positive right? way of looking at it. Yeah. No, so that's what we're gonna I get. Guess, I think it depends on how dark your sense of humor runs. You know, it's like, and how bad do you just want to see it. You know, the, it all collapse. Well, let's put it this know, way. Or, uh, see, or, I'm not. Or, I'm not a collapsitarian. Maybe a I should get into why I'm not a collapsitarian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. There sorry. You go. Or, or like an acel. Uh, what was it acelerarian? Like people just want to accelerate the collapse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's accelerationism. Yeah. Yeah, accelerationism. Thank you. Yeah. So I've I've been very adamant against that stuff. But know. you know, hey, like my favorite Christmas movie of all time, and it's a best Christmas movie. Even if Die Hard was a Christmas movie, which it's not. Nope. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like still would be dark, that bad Santa every year with guys at work. I'm like, nope, it's not, <laughs> it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> nope, it's not about Christmas. It's yeah. about a bank heist. It's a There's fucking no... great movie. And it's yeah. not you can't tell me with a straight face that, that, that a Christmas miracle is someone plummeting to their death. <laughs> That's not a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Because a watch broke. No, I'm sorry. Watches yeah. break. If you hang off someone's watch, it's not a Christmas miracle that it's going to break and they're going to die. That's not a Christmas miracle. <laughs> no, it's no not. No sane, rational universe is that a Christmas miracle. But Bad Santa is my favorite Christmas movie. And you want to talk about dark comedy. There you go. Oh, yeah. So maybe Biden was probably the right choice for me and I voted the wrong way because I just want to, I just want to see uh, an old guy just could fall into the pits of dementia live on primetime television. <laughs> I'm down. I feel Let's do a, this. I feel a meme coming on here. No. Oh. Joe Biden. It's like bad Santa only real life. <laughs> and not as funny. Oh, well, it can be. He's some of his well, yeah, some yeah, of yeah. his blunders just, have been pretty pretty entertaining. I'm not gonna uh, lie. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. I'm down. <laughs> Biden no. gang now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, this this whole thing is just kind of ridiculous and silly. Um, but yeah, so you're you're enjoying your beer. Have you gotten Very into whiskey so. at all yet, dude? I yeah, I have a couple of buddies who have been gently shepherding me down that path i, I i'm into oh, okay. it it's so you have help a matter of like it's just a matter of like yeah <laughs> good have enablers if you will but, they're they're not yeah, doing just, the dumb thing and telling you to get lagavulin and talisker and no 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 um, like, oh, buddy you're, you're new to whiskey try the try these really aggressive smoky whiskeys here you go right it's like oh you want to get into beer have an arrogant bastard yeah here have this triple hazy ipa or yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> They're not so at least they're taking you right down the right path. Like, oh, here, yeah, try this mild bourbon, try monkey shoulder. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't tried that one, but I've definitely heard of it. But see, I didn't yeah, really so, get into whiskey until I actually tried Logville, and that's when I was like, oh, this is my jam now. And I haven't really been delving into beer as much as, uh, as of lately. I've been spending most right. of my money on scotches and bourbons and stuff. So I was like, oh, that's when I really fell in love was trying something like that. So I don't know. It so, might be worth it to try something really aggressive, especially if you like really hot beers. You might it might be your up your alley. But yeah, I I don't know. I've just been much more interested in whiskey than beer lately. And I but I did have a really good stone brew not that long ago. Um mm -hmm. that's inspired by Mexican hot chocolate. Um I can't remember what the I can I I can't remember what it's called. I can't pronounce it for the life of me, so I'm not even going to try. But it starts with an X. <laughs> uh just look up stone brewery inspired by Mexican hot chocolate, Google it or duck, duck, go it. Um, and it, it, it was really amazing. I'm going to go get me another bottle. Um, nice. It's been that good, but I don't know, man, just whiskey. Is just so it was a spot. chocolate stout. I imagine like a, it was Imperial stout. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely more of a, I don't mind like the chocolate and all that stuff in it, but I'm more of like a Imperial stout guy, like old Rasputin. It's fucking amazing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but, uh, I'm, I'm really stoked because, one of the best breweries, if not the best brewery in Arizona, 
Tombstone just opened up like a second brewery, and they're actually in Tombstone. Oh, you know, hence the name. But they actually opened up like a um, second brewery up here in in uh, Phoenix. So, dude, if you if you ever find some stuff, which is unlikely because it's hard to get it here, but if you ever come across Tombstone, pick it up. It's they make stouts. Uh, their IPAs are phenomenal. Um, a lot of good loggers too. So they do a ton of ton of great shit. So. I might have to check that out. Yeah. I'm really, re- really uh, digging that. We should probably look at the chat for a little bit since someone's have been super chatting. Oh, that's what I really wanted to talk about. I was trying to remember what I was wanted to talk about was talk about the Googling, but um, it, that kind of ties into what we're, what we're going to talk about next is de Googling. So I'm kind of moving away from Google and I'm tired of it. And mostly because they insulted me um, personally. Uh, I had Show me. <laughs> you were personally attacked by Google. Yeah, I was personally attacked by Google. Personally Sweet. attacked. Um, I had a video taken down um, because of uh, it said that I was glorifying violence, or glorify or glorifying violence, or a terrorist organization or group or terrorist act. act. And the video in question was a YouTube poop that I made a while ago. And I, I know some people in this chat know which one I'm talking about. This is a of Elliot Roger. It was a YouTube poop that I made making fun of Elliot Roger because I think Elliot Roger um, – I know someone in this chat thinks he's a supreme gentleman. You're wrong. Wrong. Um, I, I think he's a piece Man. of shit. And I think the whole incel movement, it's just – it's so – uh, it's so it's so black pilled even for me, <laughs> even though I'm I'm much more of a white pillar now. But even still, in even in my most blackest of black pill days, that's a little too bit too much for me. I think the incel right. movement is just uh, at the end of the day is just uh, failed simp's. At the end of the day, um, and I think the whole ideology is um, kind of gross and disgusting. And what he did was gross and disgusting too. But the whole point of that video was to make fun of him and make fun of incels. That that was the whole point of the me making. That was my whole inspiration. Was after I saw this, I was like, "Oh wow, this is this is this is terrible." I want to make fun of this kid. So I made that YouTube yeah, poop, and horrible. it's yeah, it's making fun of him. They took it down, saying that I was glorifying him, and I appealed it. I was like, "What are you? What planet are you living on? Where you look at that and go, wow, he must really like Elliot Roger." So I was I. <laughs> I, I you know wrote it and I was like I'm 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 personally offended that you would that you would do this like I think you should actually watch the video and see it's pretty much making fun of him like I'm pretty much implying that he's a, a loser and he's a um, and uh, yeah he's a loser and uh, possibly you know you know a closeted homosexual and a creep like that was pretty much the thesis of it walking away and as soon as I hit respond. I, I didn't put it in those words, obviously. Was, sure, sure. Um, more eloquently. Yeah, a little bit more eloquently and politely. As soon as I hit send, <laughs> I got a ding on my phone. Ding! Saying, your appeal was denied. So they didn't even... Wow. They had already pre-denied my appeal before I made it. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm done. I'm just done with Google. And I'm tired of like this whole like, well, if you don't like Google services, then walk away from it. Well, it's like, well, you know what? Maybe it's time to walk away from it. And it's... It's been like a pretty arduous task to walk away from Google, considering that how much of their ecosystem I've been in for the longest time. And there was also another story where there was some game developer who never even posted his political opinions. Uh, and I think at, I mean, he was probably his probably his political opinions might have been, you know, in the, you know, in the right thing completely. Who knows? A lot of these game developers and Silicon Valley type people. Um, you oh, know, yeah. Never, ever yeah. guilty of wrong thing. But apparently they accused him of being a guilty of wrong thing and banned him from all Google services. So now he no longer has access to his email wow. accounts, his docs, um, all of this, all of this, this services, services that he relied on, even for business, just completely locked out of it and Shit, has yeah. not gotten an, in, an explanation why he was locked out of it. And that was kind of like a wake up call for me. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should start de Googling. So. I ended up moving, even though it had nothing to do with Google. I started moving my um, my my websites and and Lulberts, which this is why this episode is not going to go immediately unlisted. I'm going to keep it up for a little bit until after we're done, and then I'll upload it to the uh, to the podcast feed. Um, but so I'm transferring that over, but it's all, it's also getting some of the other stuff that are attached to Google, like JimJesus.com uh, is attached to the at least the mail 
email account is attached to it. So I'm going to try to move everything over to the, to my servers, try to get everything away from as go- much as Google as possible. I'm still going to upload stuff to uh, YouTube and, and all that stuff and stream on YouTube, but I'm going to start using restream.io to start like using other platforms as well, like DLive and Twitch and other things. Try to divert, to quote the great financial <laughs> advisor, uh, just uh, do it. <laughs> Diversify your bonds, ninja, uh, <laughs> and try to di- yeah, and try to try to you know get out of their ecosystem. But m- the first step was canceling my YouTube Music account, which I had been a subscriber for a while. They even sent me a uh, a free Nest Mini, you know, the little personal assistance, um, and I wow. unplugged that and I was like deactivate it, all that stuff, threw it in storage. Uh, I'm not even going to give it away. I- I can't let you do that, Jim. <laughs> I can't let you do that, Jim. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, demonetize my YouTube account, all that stuff. I'm just done. Uh, I'm not going to make. I'm yeah. going to make sure that you uh, that Google doesn't get another cent from me. I'm going to deactivate all of my AdSense a- ads that are on any of my websites. They're gone. Um, it's going to take a while. I have to wait until I get all my stuff transferred over to my new server um, service or host, web hosting account to uh, to do that. But that's going to be a process. Um, start you started learning how to use DuckDuckGo because DuckDuck like if you want to get away from Google who has all of this information about you, it's amazing like how much you expect them to know of you when you do a simple Google search. Search, right. How much data that they've been collecting on you for the last 20 years in order for them to know what you mean when you say like wiener schnitzel <laughs> like oh you're looking for the wiener schnitzel next to your house and you're also probably looking for if you can order online or when they're open right because we know so what, much about you and we know that that's what you're probably really looking up and um, what whiskey pairs with it right <laughs> yeah and what whiskey pairs with it like hey maybe lagavulin in 16 you might want to check <laughs> hey, that out or maybe Go with the 12 this time yeah <laughs> I'm still a big fan of the 16. I do appreciate the eight release. The 12 is pretty good. The 11 Ron Swanson version. I'm, I'm really interested in, but I'm much more interested in LaFroy galore as my next big, big, bigly, uh, huge, um, huge, huge, uh, whiskey purchase. I'm definitely going to go down the LaFroy galore path. Then I'll think about the Ron Swanson edition, but that's much more of, that's much more of like a getting a, original duke controller it's like i just want it because it's a novelty or yeah yeah i can't it. use yeah. it i don't have an original xbox i can use the new duke for my pc but the old duke that i bought i just bought it just for completely for ornament ornamentation reasons ah, which i just hate that it's called the duke because i just think of john wayne or you know taking a, a number two yeah. yeah you know i'm like uh well by the way and, ne- and neither of them, i'm not a big fan of, i'm not a big fan of john wayne but or the other one per se, why because he got canceled because of because of shit that know, most man. people thought in 1970 <laughs> who were I born in know. the 1800s. Tw- I just I just I know I just never really watched a lot of his movies. I mean, I'm not saying that he's you know just growing up. I never really watched a lot of his movies. So Mm-mm. I'm just like, yeah, well, whatever. I do At like old point, westerns. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I I'm but a I'm fan more of I'm more too, I'm but. much more of a fan of Lee Van Cleef and Clint yeah. Eastwood than spaghetti I spaghetti westerns. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But if you go to store.lulberts.com, I, I made two shirts based on this shit, shit posting that I've been doing on Twitter, which, by the way, I, I genuinely believe the Duke controller is the best. But I completely understand um, at the end of the day what the Duke controller looks like to most people. It looks like, you know, like midget hands touching this giant plate. <laughs> That's how most people <laughs> look when they, when they use it. Like, what is this? But I have midget. giant hands. So uh-huh. I, I'm I'm definitely Duke Gang. So I, I made a shirt saying Duke Gang, and someone, uh, man with a penis, actually responded to me and was like, "Hey, like, you know, like, you know, GameCube Gang or whatever." And I was like, "All right." This so, something. Okay. so I made a, a Duke Gang shirt and sweater, and then a, and a Smash Gang uh, shirt and sweater, uh, which you can get. And they both are like, are both of the listing, the product descriptions are arguing with each other. So I can't. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'll let you look at look at the product descriptions and read it yourself. Yeah, but the basically the gist of it is like 
Like, look at these little tiny baby lame cube controller people. Like, you should have big hands and, and be a big boy and, and play with the big controller. And the other one is like, okay, Ooga Booga Caveman. Yeah. <laughs> uh. We're going to, I'm going to, I have regular sized hands. So I'm going to play regular people games with my regular sized hands because I'm a normal person. I'm not a freak. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Me a freak. smash button. Oh. Yeah, this is. But they're both available. I'm actually going to get a Duke Gang uh, sweater. <laughs> the end of the That's day, awesome, but, dude. Yeah. I love it. But I'm telling you, man, getting away from Google, it's, it's not it's not easy peasy lemon oh. squeezy. It is not. It, it's going to take me a few months. Everything. Right. <laughs> tentacles. Were you, were you dog whistling there? <laughs> no. No, I wasn't. Did you vote for Biden, Richard Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excuse me, CNN commentator. Oh, sorry, yeah, Richard Spencer, official please. CNN commentator, official, Richard B. Yes. Spencer. Yeah, couldn't make this. Couldn't make this shit up two years ago, <laughs> right? Uh, but you can dude. now. You can now because it's real. It actually is a stranger real. than stranger than fiction, man. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, like I, I encourage people just to get away from Google, and it's not because like I'm trying to lead some sort of charge against Google. Like they wronged me and they insulted me, and you should follow. Like no, no, no. There's the legitimately culture. good reasons to get away from Google, and I am starting oh, to absolutely. get affected by it, and it's going to end up happening to you, especially if you say things on the internet that doesn't fit in the three by five card of allowable opinions, which is. Virtually everyone listening to me, which, by the way, we have like communists who completely disagree yeah. with me on everything, who just listen in to see if there's any libertarian infighting going on because they love that stuff, um, which <laughs> we're not going to get a lot. Well, no, we did. We we attacked Brian Sovereign. <laughs> He's wrong. He's check. wrong about yeah, movies. He's wrong we about Matrix. He's wrong yeah. about 4K. Uh, grunge was a good thing it killed hair metal that was a good thing <laughs> not to say hair metal is bad but it was time for something it, new it, yeah it was time for a change yeah absolutely um but yeah so like uh, even if you're a communist you have some benefit to get away from google but even though i'm pretty sure a lot of them now are on something like rise up um i'm probably going to start over the next few episodes start, start dropping little hints and little places that you can go to as alternatives to Google um, and yeah. how you can get away from Google and stuff like that. But it has been a task and it's not something that I was able to do by myself at all. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I mean, I I've been using DuckDuckGo for a long time. I love it. Yeah. So. And, it, and it, there's a learning curve to learning how to use that. Cause you just can't be like Wiener right. Schnitzel. Cause it's like, well, yeah, there's, you know, a food called Wiener Schnitzel. What did, what did you want exactly? Oh, did you want the fast food chain? I don't even know where you live. Do you want to know? Right. The yeah. Location it's a near more, you. Uh, labor, labor intensive, I guess. Or, yeah. Yeah. You have to kind of work a little harder. Yeah. So but that's, you know, that's the price you pay for keeping your, or, or a little bit more of your privacy or some semblance of it at least. Yeah. So it's it's a trade off, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, and unfortunately, I gotta get away the, from Gmail. I, oh yeah, that that's gonna be that's gonna be the biggest headache. The 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 my main Jim Jim at Jim Jesus, uh, which is my Jim at. Sorry, for those of you who are listen who are listening who have been around for a while, know that when I used to give out my old email, I used to purposely fuck it up because people were could not there was someone who could not understand jim at jimjesus.com and i was just like okay it's real simple jim at jimjesus.com that's how you send me an email <laughs> like what is wrong with you and then it just got to the and point at, where three months later i was like you know it's real simple it's jim at members.aol.com forward slash <laughs> earthlink semi, dot net yeah, semi -colon, tilde, colon, right. java links yeah like <laughs> <laughs> Java links two nine five one eight three. Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, um, and they probably found that one. They probably actually. Oh okay, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah, but that email, the Jim at Jim Jesus, that was attached to Google. That's going to be really easy. I just be like, you have access to my pop now, so I can just go and use that and get like, uh, what is it? What is it? Mozilla email pop email account thing. That's going to be easy to transfer over, but. For my actual Gmail account, which there's a lot of things tied to that, I have to like 
go and change my email address for all of the accounts that I think are relevant, that I'm going to still need. Then any account that I had like automatic sign in for Google, which there's like, like a good 10 services that I use that use that I have to decouple that and then put in my new email and then start using something like uh, that. I'm not going to use LastPass, but something like LastPass, some sort of pass mo- password manager and transfer all that stuff. Over. This is going to be a headache and it's going to take months for me to get yeah, through, dude. but it's going to end up being worth it. If I say the wrong thing and Google decides they don't like me anymore and don't want access to my server, it's like, well, yeah, and I, I wasn't using your services anyway anymore. I've already migrated off of that stuff. Um, yeah. So Google is the best service ever and you should totally not move away from it. I just, you know, like being a little bit better. Don't ban me yet. I'm not done. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not We're yet. cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so oh, yeah, yeah right? oh, Proton Mail. There yeah. we go. There's a good alternative. That's probably what I might end up using for my main email or something like that. So I, w- I was looking at that. I'm like, I just need to like, you know, sit down and buy it. You know, subscribe mm-hmm. to an actual service. And I think that was one of the ones I was looking at. Yeah, I, I, it's worth it. I mean, you're tra- you know, data privacy versus a few bucks in the long run. I think yeah. it's it's totally. I think it's getting to that point if it hasn't passed it already. Yeah, and Danny's in here talking about Bing. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like I have concerns about Microsoft as well, um, which is fine if they're managing my video games. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but I mean, if they're, you know, when they're when they're putting key loggers in Windows, so I hear. I'm not sure if that's true, but I've I've heard it from reputable people. Um, that's concerning. <laughs> that's Wouldn't really concerning. Out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hey, baby steps, we'll get away from Google and then we'll start worrying about whether or not I should move away from Microsoft too. Um, but there's still things that I need Microsoft for. I need Adobe Photoshop. I need Vegas, which I need to get into a Premiere game because it's a whole lot cheaper to use Premiere. And it's probably better than Vegas now. So now that Sony's not running nice. it. Yeah. I don't know. Baby steps. We'll get away from Google and then we'll start talking about whether or not we need to move away from Microsoft too. Um, then I'll start moving one, over to Linux. One corporate giant at a time. Yeah. Man. You know, <laughs> like. One of the sinister six at a time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you have anything running? You're going to start bringing up uh, Zombies, Governments, and You podcast anytime soon? That We need a revival. <sighs> I, Just like the Duke I, controller. I don't know, man. Right. Um, I actually have a website, but it's not, I just have it registered. I haven't really messed around with it. So I'm looking to maybe get in a podcast every few weeks or once, you know, bi-weekly or even once a month. So yeah, I got stuff in the, in the, in the mix. I don't know if it's going to be ZGY, man. I might, you know, I don't know if I want to, I might just go a whole nother route, kind of the same spirit, but maybe a different name, like, or a different feel. You yeah. know what I mean? I was thinking about so. re- rebranding the Lulberts, but I was like, you know what? We we're the ones that pushed the Lulberts into the lexicon. It's it's, such it's a great our name. word. <laughs> God, God damn it! I love it. <laughs> ah, I love it. And it's know? funny because I came out with the Lulberts and I was like, and when I did, everybody was like, "What? Is, what the heck is a Lulbert?" Even the libertarians like I, I've never heard that term before, and not just libertarians but like all kinds of people are like what the heck is a lulbert and then next right. thing you know like everybody's like trying to redefine what lulbert means now and it's like well you know what like i could control what it meant when it came out that's all i can do just like economics didn't mean what we understand economics to mean now it had nothing to do with that but now it means a completely different thing i can't control that but i could tell Take you what i originally time. meant <laughs> <laughs> i love it and i could tell you how it's currently being used now but that's all i can do um <laughs> but yeah so let's uh since we didn't have any super chats and by the way again because we're kind of moving away from from google services and not using their money if you super chat through uh the streamlabs link in the description box we can actually read those things um we're going to move right on to um, Amazon things, which no one bought butt stuff again. And uh, if you want to support the show, you can by you shopping at shop.lowberts.com. I should make amazon.lowberts.com so that way both work. Um, but shop.lowberts.com, store.lowberts.com is for merch. Uh, but shop will take you to the um, uh, Amazon link and we will read the things that you buy. We don't know what you buy, but we just know that someone bought it <laughs> using our link. So someone ended up buying some, uh, uh, botting, 
Someone ended up buying some uh, pinch bead clips. I don't know, whatever. Uh, right. Someone did a, ended up getting another gamer chair. Is this a good gamer chair? That actually looks like a really good gamer chair. I'm kind of regretful because I just bought a new chair. This is actually pretty nice. Furmax office desk leather gaming high back ergonomic adjustable racing task swivel exclusive computer chair headset lumbar support. I swear. The, the names that people are coming out for their for their new products and stuff is just <laughs> right. nah, just nah. It's just right on the tip of your tongue. You can't ever it forget it. Right off the tongue, yeah. Every single time. Actually, it's just a gravity is just. <laughs> it's all about SEO, wit, right? <laughs> yeah, it's all about SEO at the end of the day. But does it have a cup holder? Uh, <laughs> no. It's got two. It's got yeah. it's got uh, rest. It's got armrest. It's got a you can lean oh, back and yeah. Someone got some screen protectors for their Galaxy S9, which I should probably get uh, upgraded. I should upgrade my phone because I can't put Lineage OS on there. So I am stuck with all kinds of Google services I cannot turn off. There's some that I can. I did disable. You can only disable them. You can't remove them. You can only disable them right. from your phone. So there's a lot of sketchy things that I need to uh, fix about that. It looks like we got a super chat. We'll get to that after this. Um, some cotton... cotton Cover reusable multi layer. What, what is this? Okay. Oh, so someone bought some Koof masks. Moon uh, with moon. One word. W i t h m o o n s. Three piece. Koof masks. Very nice. Uh, you know because you have to, you're forced to. And then someone bought some some earbuds, which I'm. Huh. So I have like some. What is it? Some. Ekin. Ekin. What is it called? I don't have them on in front of me. I think it's called Ekin Ekin Fire. I don't know, but they were. No, I have. I think I have the same brand. Yeah. The Futures. It's something like that. I wonder. I bet I can look it up before we uh, get into earbuds. Yeah, it was something like it was something like knockoff. No, I don't want to say knockoff brand, but they were like fifty bucks or something. Yeah, they were pretty. I mean, they work well. Ekin Fire. Ekin. In. <laughs> Enact fire. There we go. Enact, Enact fire. E N A C F I R E. That is not a very ergonomic name. <laughs> it's not an ergonomic no, name at does, all. It does not roll off the tongue like the other chair did. Yeah, they're little wireless uh, ear uh, Bluetooth earbuds, and they they were like thirty bucks, and I was like, that's a steal. It's a hell of a lot better than you know buying AirPods or something or uh, Alexa pods or. Right getting more sucked into Amazon is probably not going to be a better idea, Go but <laughs> whatever. Google pods. <laughs> but someone bought some one called the uh, Gorson wireless earbuds. And uh, they were only 20 bucks. It's not bad. I might, I might have to pick up something like and that once these ones go dead or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then that was it. So that's all we got for this. So if you want us to talk about so stuff, if you want to buy an Xbox and be like, God damn it, how did you get an Xbox from Amazon? I'm jelly. <laughs> I'm jelly. Or even a PlayStation. Do it through the moment. Yeah. Right. So Danny has said uh, he's monopolizing my super chats. He did with a $5 donation. Thank you, Danny. And uh, we'll wrap it up. And uh, so let me know when you get that podcast going. We'll, uh, we'll get that going. And uh, hopefully we can we'll start getting Lulberts to be a more weekly thing. And sorry, I haven't had an episode come out since april <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh hail satan and worms because we're taking that worms one. we're taking it back 